The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Yeah.
O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us recite together the Antiphon and Venite. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let Please join in reciting in Psalm 145, as verses 8 through 9 and 14 through 21. The Lord, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reciting the Song of Wisdom. Wisdom freed from a nation of oppressors, a holy people and a blameless race. She entered the soul of a servant of the Lord, withstood dread rulers with wonders and signs. To the saints she gave the reward of their labors and led them by a marvelous way. She was their shelter by day and a blaze of stars by night. She brought them across the Red Sea. She led them through mighty waters, but their enemies she swallowed in the waves and spewed them out from the depths of the abyss. And then, Lord, the righteous sang hymns to your name and praised with one voice your protecting hand. For wisdom opened the mouths of the mute and gave speech to the tongues of the newborn. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. 
I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a discreet place by himself. But when the crowd heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Then it was evening. And the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowd away, so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd and all ate and were full. And they looked up what was left, they took up what was left and broken pieces, 12 basketfuls. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides the women and the children. The Gospel of the Lord. Please join me in reciting the song of God's love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Is this the love of God? Was In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. 
In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us, and sent his Son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. There is perhaps no more fraught word in contemporary society than the phrase social justice. Social justice is a popular phrase, a popular name that gets used a great deal, often not necessarily without clear understanding. It behooves us to think clearly about what is social justice and what is charity, how are they different, how are they related, and what must the church do? The gospel we just heard provides us a perfect opportunity to explore social justice and charity. The first thing that's happening in this story is that Jesus, knowing of John, his friend John the Baptist's death, hears of Herod Antipas's crazy idea that he, Jesus, is somehow a reincarnation of John the Baptist. And it's a silly idea, and I'm sure it fills Jesus with disgust because it brings to mind all anew and all afresh his grief over the death of his friend. And he has been about his father's work, healing the sick. He's gone after hearing from about Herod and his thoughts and crazy ideas. He's gone across the lake to have a moment of rest, and the people follow. And Jesus engages in an act of charity. He tells his disciples, feed these people. They are concerned. How are we going to feed them? We don't have enough food. How shall we do this? And he says, well, don't send them away. You feed them. It's very clearly a command to us for charity. And they do feed them. Jesus gives thanks for the loaves and fishes that they have, and like the mustard seed that grows into a great shrub, these loaves and fishes grow into enough food for everyone with plenty left over. It's an act of charity. And I'm sure that Jesus found, as we all do, that often our acts of charity also feed us. They help us feel better. They help us feel a little more loving. They help us through life's rough times. Often our acts of charity are not only good for other people, but they're good for us too. Now, the other thing that's so is that Herod Antipas is one of four rulers. He's a tetrarch, one of four rulers, because his father, Herod the Great, much to his children's dismay, divided his kingdom up amongst the four of them. I'm guessing it was to try to keep a war of succession from happening. So when Herod the Great died, the four children were given four different regions, and Antipas received Galilee and another region to the south, they were separated. So he got lands that were separated, which made his life even more difficult. And he had attempted to attract travelers north of Jerusalem to Galilee by building big cities and by um, drawing people in for bread and for fish, for food. And he'd taken over much of the, many of the valleys where the food, the wheat and rye was grown. And now he was taking over the lake, making it his own, taxing poor subsistence fisher folk out of existence in order to make money and raise fish and feed the region and become a crown in his reputation. So that when Jesus feeds these people with the loaves and the fish there on the shore of the lake, he's saying, you can claim Herod Antipas, 
that the lake and the land are yours, but they're not. They belong to God. Here I am with 12 loaves and two fish feeding all of these people. How are you going to tax that? How are you going to tax that? And Jesus in this act is also not only engaging in an act of charity, but he's engaging in an act of social justice. He's doing a protest act, an act of lakeside theater designed to show the problems with the structures of the society. And that is what social justice is. To work on social justice is to try to point out the problems with the bigger structures in our society and our world and to advocate for their change so that everyone has a fair share. That's social justice. So in this one act, Jesus engages in charity, which we are supposed to do as Christians. He also does an act of protest that's all about social justice. And we as Christians are supposed to work on social justice as well. People often miss that. The church is so good at doing charity. And charity is a good thing to do. But it's not the only thing to do. In the coming weeks and months, uh, you'll hear more from us about social justice here at St. Luke's. You'll hear from our anti-racism team and others as we seek to learn and grow in social justice as we seek to use our considerable influence as the people of God and as the people of Kalamazoo to promote change in structures. And that doesn't take away from the charity that we provide. It doesn't take away from the diapers we give out, the beds we give out, the food we give out. None of that is diminished by working on social justice. And indeed, some of those things, just like Jesus feeding the 5,000, are both charity and social justice. What, for example, makes the need for us to change how we fund poor folk and their need for diapers than the long lines of cars waiting to get diapers outside of St. Luke's Church and the Douglas Community Center and elsewhere. There's a need there and a problem with our structures. So I challenge you this week, when have you been involved in something that pushed against an unjust structure? that worked to change a social structure so that more people could have a fair share and a fair shot. I know without a doubt that the people of St. Luke's are generous and charitable. I also know from little things I hear you say that many of you are involved or have been involved in acts of social justice. You just may not have called it that. So as we seek to think about the social justice that Jesus calls us to do, I invite you to take some time this week. Think about acts of social justice that you've been involved in. When have you helped to change structures. Because yes, we're supposed to do charity. We're also supposed to do social justice. Morning prayer continues with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the suffrages. Help us, O Lord, our God and Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be ashamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so that we rejoice and be glad in all the days of our life. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church. And because it cannot continue in safety without thy succor, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God of all power and love, we give you thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, so that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. I invite you now to bring your own petitions, intercessions, or thanksgivings.
Please join me in reciting the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee to give us due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be thankful and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom with thee in the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>